Hey you guys, this is Allie from Allie Likes to Write. It's been a long time since I've done a podcast or really um, any kind of videos, but um, we've been pretty busy lately. I'm also a homeschool mom. My little girl's eight years old and she just finished up her second grade year and she also did her very first end of the year testing, which means it was my first time doing end of the year testing as a homeschool mom and she did really well and it was a lot of fun. We've had a great year, uh, but it's it's been super busy and so now I'm ready to focus on my latest book coming out. If you've been watching my social media, you'll see probably that I've been working on a monster story. It takes place in the swamp on the way to Ahoski, North Carolina. It's very exciting. This is the first time I've ever written anything like this. It's kind of a chapter book, so we're looking at children between the ages of 7 to 11. It's kind of perfect for that age, maybe a little bit older or even a little bit younger, but um, it is a little tiny bit scary. I'm not going to give a lot away. It's not too scary. Um, I'm not going to give a lot of it away right now, but I've had so much fun working on this, y'all. I can't wait to share it with you. I actually illustrated this too, so there's an illustration at the beginning of every chapter. And that's something new for me that I've never done before. And it's so much fun. I have had the very best time writing this book so much. But uh, with all that being said about my new book, um, it, it's going to be coming out hopefully pretty soon. But I'm still working on a few things with it. So uh, please keep an eye out for updates on my book. Um, and before I get into talking about that too much today, I want to talk about the inspiration for this book. It actually came several years ago. My little girl was still a baby, so it's been about seven years ago, I guess. Um, we were driving. She and I were just riding down to see my dad at his retirement party. It's one of those things where he worked and then retired from law enforcement, and then he went back to work and retired again. So the second time that he retired, they gave him a surprise party, and we drove down. Well, on the way down, we drove through this kind of creepy swamp area for several miles. We were the only car on the road, and it seemed like it was a skinny kind of winding road, and there was swamp on both sides. And I remember thinking, what if? And what could possibly be in those in those woods in, the, in that swamp? And that's where the idea for this story came. Um, but originally, in my mind, the character was a grown-up, and it just... It wasn't working. I just couldn't make my brain make it scary enough for a, a grown-up monster story. And so about a year ago, I finally had the idea to make it a kid's story. And I've been working on it, and it just, it all fell into place so well. At the end of every chapter, it ends you on a cliffhanger, and you just want to keep turning those pages. And it's exciting. It's fun. Um, again, I just can't wait to share it with you guys. But I also wanted to tell you, here's my book. One of the books that inspired me the most as I was writing this book was the Spiderwick Chronicles. I'll hold this up here for you. So the Spiderwick Chronicles is actually a series of books, but uh, this is just book one. And you guys, if you haven't read these books, you really need to. They are so fun and adventurous, and can you just want to keep those pages turning? I remember when I read through these. I went from one to the next to the next to the next. I just couldn't put them down. I couldn't stop um, reading the books. And that's how that's how I want my story to be too. And uh, so far, I think it's it's kind of hitting that mark. But the Spiderwick Chronicles, the, the movie, the Nickelodeon version of the movie is so, so good. It really inspired me for not only for the book that I'm currently writing, but for for a lot of my stories and things. I love how there's a magical element to it, but it's still a monster story, right? So it's still a little bit scary, a little bit dark. Um, but it was just, it brought in so many different elements and the characters were wonderful. So I went back as I was writing my monster story and reread these. And uh, I wanted to read a little bit from, this is book one, The Field Guide. And this was chapter, part of chapter four. I want to read a little bit of that for you guys. Here we go. The three siblings crept along the dark hallways of their new house. Mallory was in the lead, walking a few paces and then stopping to listen. Every now and then, there would be a scratch, 
or a sound like fall, small footsteps inside the walls. The scuttling grew louder as they neared the kitchen. In the kitchen sink, Jerry could see a pan crusted with the remains of macaroni and cheese they had for dinner. I think it's there. Listen, Mallory whispered. The sound stopped completely. Mallory picked up a broom and held the wooden end like a baseball bat. I'm going to knock open the wall, she said. Mom is going to see the hole when she gets back, Jared said. In this house, she'll never notice. What if you hit the squirrel, Simon asked. You could hurt, shh, Mallory said. She patted across the floor in her bare feet and swung the broom handle at the wall. The blow broke through the plaster, scattering dust like flour. It settled in Mallory's hair, making her look even more ghostly. She reached into the hole and broke off a chunk of the wall. Jared stepped closer. He could feel the hair on his arms stand up. Torn strips of cloth had been wadded up between the boards. As she snapped off more pieces, other things were revealed. The remains of curtains, bits of tattered silk and lace, straight pins poked into the wooden beams on either side, making a strange upward snaking line. A doll's head lolled in one corner. Dead cockroaches were strung up like garlands. Tiny lead soldiers with melted hands and feet were scattered across the planks like a fallen army. Jagged pieces of mirror glittered from, glittered from where they had been glued with ancient gum. Mallory reached into the nest and took out a fencing metal. It was silver with a thick blue ribbon. This is mine. The squirrel must have stolen it, said Simon. No, this is too weird, Jared said. Diana Beckley had ferrets, and they used to steal her Barbie dolls, Simon replied, and lots of animals like shiny things. But look, Jared pointed to the cockroaches. What ferret made his own gross knickknacks? Let's pull this stuff out of here, Mallory said. Maybe if it doesn't have a nest, it'll be easier to keep out of the house. Jared hesitated. He didn't want to put his hands inside the wall and feel around. What if it was still in there and bit him? Maybe he didn't know much, but he really didn't think squirrels were normally this creepy. I don't think we should do that, he said. Mallory wasn't listening. She was busy dragging over the trash can. Simon started pulling out wads of musty cloth. There's no droppings either. That's strange. Simon dumped what he was holding and pulled out another handful. At the army men, he stopped. These are cool, aren't they, Jared? Jared had to nod. They'd be better with hands, though. Simon put several in the pocket of his pajamas. Simon, Jared asked, have you ever heard of an animal like this? I mean, some of this stuff is really odd, you know? Like, this squirrel must be as demented as Aunt Lucy. Yeah, it's real nutty, Simon said and giggled. Mallory groaned, then suddenly went quiet. I hear it again. What? Jared asked. The noise. Shh. It's over there. Mallory picked up the broom again. Shush, Jared said. The three of them crept over to where the sound came from just as the noise itself changed. Instead of hearing the clatter of little claws scrabbling on wood, they could clearly hear the scrape of nails on metal. Look. Simon bent down to touch a small sliding door set into the wall. It's a dumb waiter, Mallory said. Servants used it to send trays of breakfast and stuff upstairs. There must be another door like this in one of the bedrooms. That thing sounds like it's in the shaft, Jared said. Mallory leaned her whole body into the metal box. It's too small for me. One of you is going to have to go. Simon looked at her skeptically. I don't know. What if the ropes aren't good anymore? It would just be a short fall, said Mallory. And both boys looked at her in astonishment. Oh, fine, I'll go, Jared said. He was pleased to find something Mallory couldn't do. She looked a little bit put out. Simon looked worried. The inside was dirty, and it smelled like old wood. Jared folded his legs in and bent his head forward. He fit, but only barely. Is the squirrel thing even still in the dumbwaiter shaft? Simon's voice sounded tiny and distant. I don't know, Jared said softly, listening to the echoes of his words. I don't hear anything. Mallory pulled the rope. With a little jolt and some shaking, 
the dumbwaiter began to move Jared up inside the wall. I'm going to stop there. Um, I just wanted to read you a little bit of that book because it's a little creepy, it's a little dark, and it's so suspenseful. You just want to find out what happens next. And I really hope that you feel the same way about the book that I'm currently writing. And please keep watching because I'll keep posting videos to update my progress. Thank you so much for watching.